I ask the careers advisor about career advice and he tells me to go and talk to the careers advisor, mate. You are the careers advisor. I'm talking to you now. Whoever wrote this game is stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on a journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid and sub to the channel for more gaming content and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. Remember, you can join the live premiere of new videos at 8pm Monday and Thursday. And if you're enjoying the series so far and would like it to continue, please consider supporting through the Patreon like all these sexy people have. You'll find the link in the description below. Today we're playing Dream of Mirror Online. It's on Steam, it's free, and it's only 2 gigs, so let's give it a go. First thing I notice is how the Steam video tells me this game is coming soon, despite releasing almost 7 years ago. Might want to update your trailer. Launch the game and it opens a window. Most lower requirement games seem to do this, I'll sort this later. There's only one server, so everyone can play together, and by everyone I mean all 22 people. Actually, that's more than we usually have on these games, so well done. You can't just play though, you've got to link your Steam account with a free Super account, so I grab another burner email and get to making. Oh god, who thought putting white font on a light yellow background was a good idea? I can hardly read any of this. Okay, admit it, because this must have been one of you lot. Who took the username Josh Strife Hayes? Come on, out with it, admit it, who was it? I'm not mad, just disappointed. Right, Suba account made and linked back to the game window. Let's see if I can make this look full screen through the magic of editing. I can, but damn, that resolution is bad. I will fix that later. Character creation, here we go. You've got four races, they are basically human, human with long hair, angry human, and child. This in-game text is awful to read. Those horizontal artifact lines, that's not a recording issue, that's how they actually look in the game. I go with angry human, then slide all the creation sliders to the right, making him as tall and powerful as he can be. He is one chonky boy. To confirm your character, you have to enter your password again in two boxes, one of which says delete. I don't understand why you need to do this for character creation. The game starts, the text is almost impossible to read, I am squinting at the screen, and there's no music. We're treated to this amazing cinematic of our character staring out over the ocean. Then the Chasm King appears and tells us we're in the mirror world, which is an exact copy of the real world, but different. We have been summoned here via the mirror scroll for reasons, then we're asked to listen to the planet, and the game gives us the most metal description. Check this out. The earth cracks, the oceans boil, the stench of blood fills the air. Evil reigns and warfare is widespread, the siren of doom rings throughout the land. That is brutal! The only thing wrong is that sirens don't ring. Bells ring. Sirens sound like, well, a siren. So the world is in pain and we need to fix it. We're told to go and meet Theodore in the plaza. Moving the character isn't WASD, nor is Space Jump. You move around by left clicking, or you can hold left click and your cursor becomes an arrow that you'll follow. It's not an awful movement system, it's just not what I was expecting. I click around some menus and then a loud sound effect happens. The text box lets me know another player has achieved something. So the game has no background music, but does play sounds for other people doing stuff. I need to make this full screen. Remember, I'm still playing in a window, or at least increase the resolution. I go and find the full screen options, but they need a restart, so... Oh no, god, that's worse. Go back, go back! Right, I found the problem. This game only has 4 to 3 aspect resolution, not the standard 16 to 9. Basically, it's gonna look like a TV show from the 90s. It does not have widescreen support. Which is why we've got these black bars around the edge. You know what? No problem. I can fix this. This is an anime game, so let's fill them in with an anime background. Just gotta find one that fits. Nope. No. Oh, hell no. Too much action. Too emotional. Too much... plot. Way too good for this game. Finally, after racking my brains, it comes to me. I'll just put up a picture of another unknown anime game to fill the space. Perfection. I stumble around the menus, find the music, slide it up, and it was off. Why? Why on earth would you have your in-game music set as off by default? Anyway, we have music now. Oh what? There's also a WASD movement toggle. 
Well, you're absolutely going on. Finally, back to some level of normality. Fine, Theodore, he sends me to kill five pupas. Just think, and I mean really think, about how odd that request is after meeting someone for the first time. It's like, oh, hey, good to meet you. Could you do me a favour and go and kill five pigeons? Thanks, I really appreciate it. Theodore gives us some basic equipment. The inventory is fine and the equipped item screen is simple enough to figure out, but annoyingly they always revert back to their original position on the screen if you close and reload the game. It doesn't remember where you put the user interface. Combat is left click and wait. These things do no damage to you at all. You could not die here if you tried. When you cursor over an enemy, it changes to a boxing glove and you get a little tooltip showing how tough the fight is going to be compared to you. This one says, as tough as you. We do the quest and Theodore gives us a better tunic, tells me I have bright eyes and might be the chosen one. Why, Theodore, you sly dog, you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Have a chat with the Elder, find out zooming in breaks the character model. You can zoom in close enough to block the camera, but not quite close enough to play in first person, so if you've been looking for a game where you can play as a disembodied floating torso, then my god do I have a game suggestion for you. The Village Elder has a serious attitude problem despite looking about 10, and says, I'm just a kid who doesn't even know about distributing attribute points, oh my sweet summer child. Now the game just straight up makes me laugh, like properly out loud. The attribution tutorial tells you every time you level up you get three points to spend and then what each stat does. Physical attack, magical attack, health, defense, but then it just tells you to put all your points into strength. No joke, it literally just says, max out your strength. So I go to do that. But there's no attribute called strength. It's called power. Look, if we're gonna use specific terms for stuff, we need to at least get them right, game. After doing that, you talk to the Elder again, but this time you must select no to the stat tutorial to get the rest of the quest. It's like branching conversation dialogues, but you have to go through the initial dialogue completely every time. She sends us southeast to kill some flying pupa. Okay then. Not really flying, are they? They're just basically the same pig model, but with small wings. While killing them, the background music finishes, and I expect it to loop back and start playing again, but apparently not. We just get to play in silence. I timed it. There is a one minute silence between the ambient music ending and starting again. Back to the Elder, flying pigs have been killed and we are rewarded with some plot. The Shura, that's the race I'm playing as, are naturally angry. In fact, we're so angry we kill each other and fight and generally don't have much control anymore. I'm tasked with finding the wisest Shura and seeking his wisdom so we can recover our glorious empire. I'll need to wake him from a deep slumber, but where is he? Maybe far off over some distant mountains, maybe buried in a raging volcano fortress, maybe he's long since vanished and I'll need to quest for years to find him. Nah, apparently he's just on the docks outside the village. Chat to the wise dude and he transforms into a dragon. A dragon called Rumble Runner. Apparently, a dragon is the true form of a Shura, but years ago we just kind of forgot how to do that. So I need to wander around the world, gaining knowledge until I remember how to do the dragon thing. Honestly, I don't expect much from an MMO plot, so wander around till you become a dragon kind of works for me. We're also warned not to tell anyone about our draconic ancestry because this knowledge is too powerful and secret and as the dragon says, they are not ready to know. Then he fades into the ether. Obviously, I run back to the village and tell Theodore absolutely everything because secrets are for losers and he somehow already knows of, and I quote the game, Mr. Rumble Runner's death. The Chasm King appears again and gives us a monster trapping mirror. He explains that when a monster is low on health, we can use the mirror, trap the monster, then summon it later to help us. Right, well, I guess this calls for a background change. I have to use this mirror on this enemy to complete the tutorial, but I can't because I keep killing it by mistake. Curse my rippling sword swinging muscles. Back to the village, we're told to use the teleporter to go to Eversun. I assume the teleporter will be a cool looking machine, but no, it's just a guy called Eversun Teleporter. He warns us that once we leave, we cannot return. Um, yes. Yes, you can. I tried it. You can just turn around and teleport right back, no problem. This is a two-way street. Spacebar isn't jump, which is getting really annoying. This is an MMO. Jumping is a sacred mechanic that should never be messed with. 
Speak to Winged Colette. She won't talk to me with my weapon equipped, so I unequip those. And now she asks me some questions about destiny, warning me my answers will affect my whole life. She explains there's a war going on between humans and monsters. The humans want order and justice, while the monsters want freedom and individual liberty. Oh, don't worry, Colette. I've made this choice before. Colette then has one speech bubble appear, and our character replies, I'm tired of this endless talking. We're asked which side we want to join, and the choice is obvious. Loctar Ogar, I go with the Horde. I mean, the monsters. Colette explains these green things around the world are world mirrors, and activating one will start an instance. Probably a bit beyond me right now. Then she gives us our first quest. Bring 200 gold to the inn at 1800 hours. Now, the game does have internal time, but it's very, very slow, and we're still several hours away, so that's not being completed for a while. This next bit is just pure, unfiltered cringe. Our character asks for a photo with Colette, and the game then tells us to get ready to press the print screen key. Yep, it actually wants us to take some in-game screenshots and tells us they'll be saved in a special folder. Game, listen, I am a grown man, I am not taking screenshots of you. Head through to the main city, not quite sure where to go, so I talk to a guide. Thankfully they have a mission for me called Guided Tour. I need to go and talk to all the important people in the city. I suppose that's one way to encourage a player around your town, but I mean, it's not really a guided tour, is it? I don't have a guide. First person, Melvin the Super Smith Marshal, that's his actual name. He sends me off to the drugstore. Now you can open the world map and click to move, but the pathfinding is somewhere between perfect and garbage. So sometimes it takes you right there, and sometimes you get stuck on a wall. You'll never know, it's always a gamble. It does not seem to work very well in the city. Also, it has a habit of making you run over teleporters and throwing you off to random locations. Talk to the drugstore guy, then the Chasm King pops back for a quick chat. Doesn't really explain anything, and then we're off to the bank. It's nice to see the ancient art of bank standing being fully respected here. We all know the true endgame of any MMORPG is standing still by the main bank. The Outfitter explains that each job is a class you can train in, and each job wears different clothes and armor, so it's just Final Fantasy XIV's job system. Now, a very creepy mechanic which I don't fully understand. As I'm walking through this plaza, a red beam locks onto me. I'm thinking, sniper? Missile? But no, it's probably worse. When this happens, you'll hear a thumping heartbeat sound. Look, even more red lines start. They are coming from other players. Right-clicking these players, one of the options is Join Lover. I mean, these reviews have to be thorough, so I click it, and thankfully, nothing happens. But hey, two red lines. Ladies, don't fight. I'm sure we can work something out later. The job seekers explain jobs to me and give me a book that I will never read. Then I'm told to visit the recycling brother by the north gate. He's quite the walk away and explains breaking down items and equipment into stuff for crafting. He sends me north through the main city gates to the banker. Quite why the banker wasn't in the bank, I don't know, but the banker explains about merchants. Right, that's everyone important met, so run all the way back to the guide. Quick note on the world map, it's bad, it's cluttered, it's garish, it blends into one giant mess and it's hard to read, it doesn't make people, places or locations obvious, so this just needs a tidy up. Quick question to all you MMO fans, what does pressing shift in a game usually do? Did you say make your run faster? If you did, congratulations, you understand game design better than the developers, because in this game, shift makes you stop. My reward for meeting everyone is some experience and a vitamin pill. Oh, okay, drugs, wow. Um, kids remember, if a random man on the street gives you drugs, say thank you, because drugs are expensive. Now we have a choice of quests, and I go for the Kill Wild Puga. Pupa. Puba. I can't tell if that's a B, a P, or a G. Pew something. Outside the city, the guide wants 20 of their bones. Hey look, the quest list has an instant transport button which will take me right there. But oh look, it costs super points, which are premium currency. 10,000 super points will set you back $9. You can pay real world money to play less of the game. Right outside the city gates, I find some pew things, but they're not dropping the quest item. So maybe these aren't the right ones. I'll run around a bit and look for some others. The quest text earlier mentioned how they'd made life hard for farmers, and there's a farm northwest of me, so maybe they're around there. 
This game feels very not open world. It feels like a series of short and confined pathways, extremely linear, and then that's confirmed when I find this. You cannot slide down this hill. You cannot go from the higher path to the lower path. You must run all the way around. This isn't a freeform open world MMO. It's very confined. If you could actually see the invisible walls in this game, it would look like a corridor. I find a recipe and a pot. I'll make sure to try crafting later. Ah, I find the farm and I find some wild pupa. Let's see if these guys have the quest item. They do! Brilliant! Now to kill 20 of them. This is actually quite grindy already. I ping level 10 and the king pops back to explain jobs. Once I'm back in the city, I can talk to the dojo master and choose a profession. Oh, I'll also now lose experience on death because that's always a fun mechanic. Why is all the text in this game so tiny and grainy, but the combat numbers and the miss graphics in fighting look like early 90s subway graffiti? Finally get 20 skulls. Use this item to teleport back to a respawn point. I hope to god the respawn point is in town. And thankfully it is. I go back to the guide and try and hand in the quest, but I can't seem to. I talk to her more. I go through the options for that quest. It just keeps looping back. I try to use the items on her. No luck. I, I don't understand what you want me to do, game. I've done the quest and I'm talking to you about the quest. Fine, you know what? I'll just accept all the other quest options. One needs me to kill 20 birds and another is 20 dogs called Bad Baby Bow Wows. I'm seeing a numerical pattern here. Oh, hang on. The last chat option. Return mission items. Is this how you hand in quests? What the hell? You can't just automatically turn quests in or have the game detect that you've got the items and ask about that. You've got to manually choose turn in mission items, double click the items you were collecting and then click finish. What a stupidly convoluted way to hand in quests. I've never seen a game do this before and I hope to never see it again. On the King's advice, I head to the dojo and look for a job. Talking to the careers advisor gets me a token. I can trade this token for basic items and equipment. I then ask the careers advisor how to change jobs and he advises me to talk to the careers advisor. Mate, you are the careers advisor. Bloody hell, who programmed this text tree? <gasps> There's a witch doctor class. Ooh. E. Ooh. Ah, ah. Ting tang. Walla walla bing bang. That heartbeat sound has not stopped since I got back here. I'm glad you're enjoying this hunk of chiseled man, ladies, but please control yourselves. The Swordsman class, taught to me by the Blade Master NPC. Let's become one of them. I must pass the trial to be worthy of the class. The trial is fighting the class trainer themselves very well. Let the trial begin. So, I killed the trainer. Very easily. Wow, this is awkward. Honestly, if I can beat you that easily, I don't think I want to learn from you. The game then asks if I want to be teleported back to the careers advisor. Um, you mean the one that's two steps away? Yeah, sure, let's save some time. Thanks, game. That was a massive help. The game uses Blade Master and Swordman interchangeably, another example of not being specific with terms. All the Swordsman skills are above my level, so I can't do much yet. You know what's really annoying me? Just how much space my character portrait is taking up. I mean, look at it, the whole top left of the screen is blocked off and I can't play like this. Thankfully, you can click the arrow to remove it and gain some screen space back. Watch. That's better, I can see the game now. Next quest, 20 forest cuckoo feathers. Right, where are they? The game mentions something about them poisoning a water source, so a river, maybe? I scour the world map, and oh, the world map does actually show you where quest enemies are. You see those red symbols that look like the 40k Inquisition logo? They are quest enemies. Hover your mouse over them to see what they are, so off toward them. This music feels like it belongs in an early PlayStation 2 game, a low-budget, bargain bin generic RPG. Pro Gamer Stra, let me tell you something the game won't. You can click and drag your abilities from your abilities window onto your hotbar for quick use. Second Pro Gamer Strat, most abilities can't be used if you're not wielding the correct equipment. The top line of this ability lets me know I need a saber, but they've missed a space out, so it's one word. It just says, need saber. Ping level 11, the king's back. It's getting quite creepy now. Are you just invisibly watching and waiting for me to level up? He explains the job system really badly and how we can put points into specific abilities, so it's like general leveling up but more complicated. 
Here's a system the game hasn't explained at all. See in the bottom left it says combo. Well, whenever I hit something this bar fills up and the number goes up. Then when I click combo it empties and I do massive damage. I'm not sure what the little crystal gems above it are though. I just know the combo attack is super powerful. You can also use the combo attack by clicking on it or pressing control plus W. W, the key used to move you forward. Right, pro tip designers, never default bind an attack or ability to a key that's also used for movement. Makes moving while using it super complicated. If a player wants to rebind it that way, that's fine, but don't have it bound as standard. 20 enemies killed, go to use my home teleport, and it has a one minute cooldown remaining. God, I can see how this is going to go. There's going to be a lot of running here, a lot of filler, which means time for a background change. Oh god, I get back and because I can't read the tiny text, I've only got 19 stupid feathers instead of 20. God damn it, fine, I will go back and get one more. Might as well do some other quests while I'm gone. The drill sergeant needs four people and despite asking around, I can't find anyone willing to help or talk to me. Come here, you stupid bird, give me your feather. Now onto the stupid dogs, 20 of these. This is the moment I realise I've probably hit the content wall. You see, no matter how much further I play, it's likely going to be the same. Get an enemy, kill 20 of it, hand in, repeat. Honestly, I'm cutting a lot of content from this video because most of my gameplay time was just this. Normally when I make these videos, I play for six to eight hours making notes as I go, but now I'm just gonna power through and see how far I can get. Notes be damned. Hand all the quests back to the guide, they send me to the village elder, who again looks about 12. They need me to investigate the mortuary because apparently there have been some zombie attacks and they need to know why. Sure, I can do that, but while I'm here, let's buy a saber, make actual use of my swordman skills. I'm able to find the weapon shop because I paid attention to the tutorial quest earlier. Aha! See? I'm learning. Map move in cities still sucks and I just bump into buildings. This is, however, unforgivable. Remember how there's no jump and there's invisible walls everywhere? Well, this is how extreme they are. You cannot step off a curb. There is a barrier preventing me from walking off this edge into the main street. You have to run back round and leave by only the flattest of surfaces. That is awful. You should be ashamed of putting that in your game. The shop interface sucks too, not because of how it looks, but because of how it mechanically works. Buying and selling is done from two different menus. The buying one needs you to manually open your own inventory and drag stuff to it, but selling shows your inventory on the right hand side where you'd assume the seller's stock is. It's inconsistent. Anyway, I managed to sell some junk and buy a cool new sword. Don't get any armour though, armour's for wimps. The best defence is incredible offence. Plus, I've been putting literally all my points into power. Back in the outskirts, the mortuary is far to the north. Will clicking the map be able to take me there? Yes, it will, but now there's a problem. I went to grab a drink and when I came back I saw I was being chased by zombies, so um, run, run away very quickly. God, these things have a long pursuit range. Oh my god, that was close, barely survived there. Now recovering HP, I've got those vitamin pills I got a while back that heal 80, but they have a cooldown. Or I can just have a nice sit down and get some health back. Back to full health, let's fight our way through and hang on, why do I have two shadows? One on the hill and one on the floor. How? There's only one light source. Actually, no, there aren't any light sources, there's no sun and no lanterns. How did this happen? Can't take on all these zombies, so I sneak through, unseen, like Solid Snake. Wait, no, that game is way too good to be included here. Um, like Sam Fisher. No, that's actually still too good a game. Like Gabe Logan. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do. Then my character says, Those vagrants look like nasty work. I should avoid them and stay out of trouble. Wow. You're meant to be the hero. The chosen one. The sparkling eyes, two red line getting hunk, and you are scared of some low level enemies. I am embarrassed to be your player right now. Find the mortuary minion and he explains the situation. Turns out the undead are rising because of some negative energy. Dude, what? This is a serious situation. Zombies are attacking people. You can't blame this on bad feng shui and call it a day. Gonna need a bit more from you than negative energy. Run all the way back and report this back to the village elder. They then tell me to fetch an exorcist. Good idea. So I pop over to the shrine and let the local exorcist know his mortuary is all zombified up because of bad thoughts. He says, cool, go and fetch 10 zombie charms and 10 demonic zombie charms. Ah, clever quest. Didn't want to say fetch 20, but you can say fetch 10 twice. Variety. 
I like it. On my way back, I run through the central town square, and what the hell are these? Are these player-owned shops? Damn, there's loads of them. And they all say Soft Star Entertainment Inc. on the side. I google it, and... Oh, they're a Chinese company that make bad MMOs. Awesome to know. Just gonna add all those games to the to-play list. Run all the way back to the zombies, and you know what's really annoying me about the zombies? The fact that the actual enemy design is really nice. They're wrapped up in fabric with talismans taped to their face. That's a really unusual and unique zombie design. It actually looks awesome. Fighting a zombie or two brings me close to death. They are much tougher, so I'm resting between kills. Oh, this is bandits from Tale of Toast all over again. So you know that I need to get 10 regular and 10 demonic talismans? Well, they're not guaranteed drops. So from my guess, and a few minutes here, they're about 30 to 40% drop rate. So this is going to take a lot longer. Look at this design, it's awesome! It's a cool idea wasted on a bad game. I am burning through healing items. I need to hold off on using these or I'm gonna run out. This has taken ages. It's a level 12 quest while I'm level 13. Each kill is slow and each kill is not a guaranteed drop. I'm over leveled for this and it's still dragging. I look away for a moment, look back, and I'm dead. Great, some experience lost, but oh look, you've got options. You can revive with bronze, silver, or gold status. What do these do? So bronze restores 33% of your lost experience on death. Silver is 66% and gold is 100, but yeah, you guessed it, they cost premium currency. So I go for the normal revive and brilliant, we are back in the city. There are so many people here. This must be everyone that plays because this place is packed and the render distance is just laughable. Objects are loading in as I walk anywhere. I don't want to head back to the zombies just yet, so let's see what worker number one, that's his actual name, needs. He needs me to fetch 20 red fragments from the temple. You know that other numbers do exist, game. The map movement in cities is just beyond useless. I can't find any red fragments in the shrine, so I talk to this dude and he teaches me meditation. To train meditation, you stand still while holding a white stick for 30 seconds. Oh, doing that gave me a crystal! Sweet, I need 20 of these. Wait, I need 20 of these. Let me just time this. One meditation cycle takes 30 full seconds and gets me one fragment. For 20, that's 600 seconds. This quest is literally stand here doing nothing for 10 full minutes. So I just go and get a cup of tea and then sit here staring at the screen for 10 minutes. There's nothing else I can do. Get 20 fragments. I go to leave the shrine, but nope, I can't walk down the steps. Several times. Wow, designers, if you cannot program steps, may I suggest a ramp? Worker One is very impressed and sends me to the Ironmonger to turn all of these fragments into one red powder. They do this very quickly, then I return and show Worker One the powder, and he explains the basics of alchemy to me. First, you need to learn a recipe, then open your skills menu, then click everyday skills, then go to alchemy, then choose red pill. Now, even if you do have all the ingredients, like I do, they'll still be marked as red and no on the list. Just don't worry about that. I combine everything together and make a red pill. It's a health item, and it heals 40. Are you having a laugh game? I just stood in a shrine doing nothing for 10 minutes to get a pill that heals 40 health. You've been giving me pills that heal 80. This is useless. Right, back to the zombies. Me and my one red pill run all the way back. But then I'm attacked on the way, so I need to swallow the red pill. And now my character won't stop ranting about Chad's, Stacy's, and joining a pickup artist group. There is so much travel in this game, I wouldn't mind it if the scenery wasn't so damn bland and looked like it was made in paint. Then I'm kicked off the server. Oh, um, why? The server is shutting down. Wait, what? I checked the game's websites for any announcements. Now, I'm not saying this game is abandoned, but the last official latest update is from 2018. What do you mean the server's shutting down? I try and get on a few more times, no luck, so I check the Steam discussions and oh, it's just routine maintenance, no major problems. Wonder how long this will take? It doesn't seem to say anywhere. Not on the website, not on Steam, I even googled it and no info. Then I check the game's Facebook page. Now there's no official time for how long maintenance takes, but I do find a post from earlier this month saying Maintenance starting at 16.40 and another on the same day saying finished at 10 past 9, so that took four and a half hours. Further down, there's 
Two more posts that are just over three hours apart from start to finish. Look, game, I don't hate you, but I'm not waiting for three hours to go and kill some zombies with a low drop rate. So let's just wrap this up. Dream of Mirror Online. Was there any reason to set it in a mirror dimension and not just a regular dimension? The mirrors didn't seem to come into play much. Honestly, it's just another cheap, unpolished Chinese MMO. The font's awful, the localization text isn't great, a few bugs here and there. It's got some stable-ish systems, but nothing to write home about. It's probably fine for a kid, although saying that, the red lust lines are pretty creepy. It's not action, it's not full tactics, it's not craft heavy, it's not really plot driven, and it's not a Pokemon clone. It doesn't really know what it is or what it wants to be, it feels like it's still kind of finding its feet. Which is why the final rating for Dream of Mirror Online is go and speak to a careers advisor out of 10. Cheers for watching. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. If you're enjoying the series and would like more, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title of worst MMO, then check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord chat. We'd love to see you there, and as always, have a great day.